All right, now let's have a look at the practice problems here. We're going to look at problems two and three. In this situation, problem one, we're determining the equation of the line that's perpendicular bisector, or it is, is the perpendicular bisector, the segment joining three, negative two, and one, eight. So our line looks like this here, and we're creating a perpendicular bisector that looks something like this. All right. Now, we want to determine this line here, L. Now, with any uh, line like this, we can go ahead and figure out its properties here. We know that if this is the case here, it's a perpendicular bisector. Not only is it perpendicular here, right? So we can deal with that, the perpendicular bit. So we know, therefore, that the slope of this line, L, has to be the negative reciprocal of the slope like this here. So we can calculate the slope of the line. So in this case, the slope of this line here, we can say it's 8 minus the negative 2 all over 1 minus 3 here. So let's say that looks like 10 over minus 2, which is minus 5. So therefore, the slope of the perpendicular line, the slope of line mm -hmm. L, in this case, is going to be negative 1 divided by negative 5 here. So we know that this line L has a slope of 1 fifth. Okay? So not only does this line being per is this line perpendicular, we also know that it is it runs from the midpoint here because it has to be a bisector of this line segment. So we have to figure out what the midpoint here is. So let's call the midpoint. So we can say the midpoint here. We know it's going to be 1 plus 3 over 2, and then 8 minus 2 over 2 here. So we're just adding, again, taking the average of the coordinates. So in this case, it's just 4 over 2 and uh, 6 over 2, which is the point 2 comma 3. So that means this point here is 2, 3. So now we actually have all the properties of the line that we want. We know that this line L has to have a slope of 1 fifth and pass through the point 2, comma 3 here. So there are many ways you can do this here. You can use slope intercept form, point slope form, what have you here. I'll go ahead and do this here. We know that according to this, it's the uh, we can use slope intercept. We have y equals mx plus b here. We know the slope is 1 fifth and we know the point 2, 3 lies on it. So we can start substituting in. 3 is 1 fifth times 2 plus b. All right, we can go ahead. So this 3 equals 2 fifths plus b here. So b, let's see, we subtract 2 fifths from both sides. 3 is 15 over 5. So that means we get 13 over 5 here. So as a result, the equation of our line is therefore y equals 1 fifth x plus 13 over 5. Alternately, you can write this in standard form. If you don't like the fractions, then that's not a big deal. Okay, problem three. Problem three, on the other hand, a uh, little different. This one comes from an old contest here. So we're told that three vertices of a cube lie at these points here. We want to determine where the center of the cube is. Now, that's interesting. So we're going to go ahead and sketch our cube like this here. Now, the first thing to note is that there are very few points here that there are very few coordinates here that match which means that this cube is probably going to be sort of tumbling in three-dimensional space. None of its edges will be uh, parallel to the axes here. So we know that if we have a cube like this, there are eight vertices, and that three of the vertices are this. Unfortunately, that doesn't tell us much. But we do know the center of the cube is going to be, well, one way we can think about it is if we consider this diagonal here, right? We know the center of the cube has to pass through this diagonal here. So if we can figure out if one of the, if we can see that one of these is the, you know, a diagonal of the cube, we should be in good shape here, okay? So let's see if we can figure something out. So at this point, there's not much we can do with this. I guess what we can do is we can try to look at perhaps other things here. Well, let me go back. If we know that let's call the the side of the cube x right there are three different kinds of segments here we can connect edges and therefore they're all x right however note that if we have this thing on the bottom here we can create this sort of thing like this we can create a diagonal of one of the faces of the cube here and since this bottom face or any other face is a square with side length x it's pretty clear that by pythagorean theorem this has to be x radical 2 so this red segment here which is a diagonal of one of the faces one of the faces is going to be x radical 2 now, the blue diagonal is a space diagonal. It's a diagonal that runs through the interior of the cube here. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem yet again figure this out. We get x radical 3 here. So that actually gives us a bit of a hint here, right? Because there are only three different types of segments that we can draw on a cube here joining any two points. So since we have this here, we can hope that perhaps this matches in some way here. So we're going to, the best thing we can do is just do calculations here. We can just try to calculate the distances here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the distances of all three of these things here. So I want to find the lengths of these segments. So let's see. Let's do that here. So AB, so it's going to be 2 minus 0 squared plus, now remember we're in 3D, but it really doesn't matter too much here because it's basically the same idea. Uh, 0, 5 and 0, uh, sorry, 3, 5 and 0, 4, right? So this is going to be, let's see, square root of 2 squared plus 
negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, and that looks to me like 4 plus 4 plus 16. That here is radical, so let's see, uh, 8 plus 16 is 24, and that in this case we can yank out a 4 here, right? So we get 2 radical 6. Hmm. That doesn't seem to match anything, but that's okay. We're going to have to keep going anyway. Uh, let's look at BC now. BC, we do the same thing here, do the calculation. So BC is going to be 0 minus 4, 5 minus 1, and 4 minus 8 here. So let's go ahead and do the calculation like this. So let's see, there's minus 4 squared, plus 4 squared, plus 4, negative 4 squared. So we see that that is the square root of 16 plus 16 plus 16 which in this case is radical 48, which is, we can yank out a 16 here, and this here is, radi is four, radical uh, no, yeah, 4 radical 3 here, okay. So I'm actually going to keep these as well, because the, I look at this and I see that, you know, radical 48 is square root of 2 times radical 24. That gives us some hope. So just to be on the safe side, now we can go to the last thing here, AC. And again, we do the distance formula here. So let's go ahead and sketch that out. AC, the distance formula here, let's see, that's going to be 2 minus 4 plus uh, 3 minus 1 plus 0 minus 8. And again, these are all squares here. We're going to take these differences and square them. So let's see, that's a minus 2 squared plus a 2 squared plus a minus 8 squared. Oh, that's pretty good. So we get 4 plus 4 plus 64, so 64 and 4, uh, so let's see, 64 to 8, 72. And actually, let me leave it like that. Because now we can see here that this actually looks quite good. Radical 24, that seems, so now we have three numbers, 24, 48, and 72, and we can see that's a 1 to 2 to 3 ratio. So it would seem that that's the case that the side length x is actually radical 24 here. We can see that radical 48 is radical 24 times radical 2, and radical 72 is radical... Uh, Radical four, uh, radical 24 times radical 3 here. So with that in mind, we actually can determine that these three points here, A, B, and C, are actually in really good positions here. So A, B must therefore be a uh, an edge, B, C must be a face diagonal, and A, C has to be a long diagonal. And A, C is what would be what we want to want. So that means we can have something that looks like this here. Now granted, again, so that means we know that the configuration of points is going to be something like this here. So now, we can determine the vertical points at the center of the cube. So now we can finish up the problem here. So the center is going to be the midpoint of AC, which is going to be 2 plus 4 over 2, 3 plus 1 over 2, and 0 plus 8 all over 2. So that's going to be 6 over 2, 4 over 2, and 8 over 2. And it gives us the point 3, 2, 4. And that is the center of, oops, sorry, and that is the center of the cube.